Hello! Welcome to our first book club of 2019. We are kicking it back old school and talking about Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban by J.K. Rowling. In case you weren't sure who the author was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we did Chamber of Secrets last year and Sorcerer's Stone slash Philosopher's Stone the year before that. Um, so it's just the natural progression. Um, so I guess we will start with our ratings. And since this is Harry Potter, we're going to do ratings and rankings. So your star rating and then also like where it ranks among the Harry Potter books. So it doesn't have to be like an exact oh. number. <laughs> 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 oh no, I'm so caught off guard. Um, okay, so rating out of five, just in general. Um, I am torn because it's my favorite movie, but not my favorite book. Oh, we're gonna, we're gonna have <laughs> <What is that>? <laughs> <laughs> it's one of my favorite movies, but not my favorite book. Um, and I have a hard time separating the two of them. But I'm going to say like four out of five, like 4.5 out of five for the general rating. And maybe like, I don't know, it's my second to favorite book or something or third to favorite. I don't know. Somewhere in like your top three. Yeah, it's a good one. Kelly? So I kind of rank all the Harry Potter books as five stars, like even knowing they have flaws. it's I enjoy them that much. They are five star reads for me. In terms of ranking, I always feel weird about it because like for a long time, it was my like number seven. It's probably in my bottom three still. And it was always like everybody loved book three and hated five. And I loved five and really didn't enjoy three. But again, really didn't enjoy three on a scale of Harry Potter books because I still really enjoyed it. Megan, welcome. Hi. <laughs> Do you know what your rating is and where you would rank Prisoner of Azkaban, like among the other Harry Potter books? Um, give it a five, because I mean, most of them get fives. Um, <laughs> and it's probably like a top three for me. Um, it used to always be my favorite, and like the fifth one was my least favorite, but. Uh, the older I've gotten and the more I go back and look at book five, I like it a lot more now. Um, so yeah, top three. <laughs> I would also give it five and kind of similar. Like I'd say it's probably still my favorite one, partly because of the nostalgia. That, like, yeah, it was definitely my favorite one for a really, really long time. Um, and I think it probably still is, but like it's pretty close to being tied with the fifth one now, which like, I have like, Movie though is the worst one. It's the worst of the movies. Yes. It's Aaron's favorite movie. So. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Why did I even come to? <laughs> oh my god, you guys! It's also a nostalgia thing because I wasn't allowed to watch the Harry Potter movies, but somebody had given me the Prisoner of Azkaban, the DVD, and I just like smuggled Aww. it in and watched it. So it was like the one I was able to watch. When I was nice. like, <laughs> Have you already so, read them at that point? I had, okay. yeah. But we weren't allowed it. Like, I also read them in secret too, right? Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I wasn't allowed to read them in my like uber conservative Christian home. So mm -hmm. I snuck all of them in, read all of them. And then that was one of the movies that I actually owned before I owned any of the other movies. Oh, so you were like literally Harry Potter in the opening scene. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hiding under my sheets with a flashlight <laughs> reading the book. Yeah. yeah, pretty much. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> As like a semi-mature adult now, I can like say <laughs> that like the movie's not as bad as I once thought it was. Like I think that like cinematically, like just considered as a movie, not as like a Harry Potter, but just as a movie, like it is a really well-made movie and like the visuals are really beautiful. And like obviously mm -hmm. Alfonso Cuaron is like a very skilled film filmmaker, you know, um, and that mm -hmm. shows, but like as a Harry Potter movie, I really don't like it because I think like visually it doesn't sync up with the other ones at all. Like. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just feels very jarring to me. Like, I don't know. That's so interesting because yeah. I love it because of the uh, the way it looks. Like, yeah. I was just watching it and really enjoying the visuals. Mm -hmm. And, like, it also has some of the 
scene that like are my favorite that feel so happy to me. Mm -hmm. Like when they're all in the Gryffindor common room and they're trying those sweets mm -hmm. and like they're mm -hmm. laughing with each other mm -hmm. and it pans back and shows you like the dark rainy night, but that they're inside and it's light and they're laughing and they're having fun and yeah. trying magical candies. Mm -hmm. Right. Like it's just like a lot of heartwarming yeah. scenes. And also the scene where he blows up his aunt is like hands down the funniest. <laughs> One of my favorite scenes in any movie ever. Yeah. <laughs> that's why I'm like, at, like now older, like and looking back on it, I can be like, okay, it isn't like a bad movie, but like at the time, it was so so different from the first two that like it was very jarring. And I think like I think he made it two different all at once. Like if it had been a little bit more gradual, it would have been okay. But it was like because like the first looking back at the first two, they're a little bit too like simplistic and childlike. I think. But it was just mm -hmm. such a quick change to like suddenly they were wearing completely different clothes. Hogwarts looked different. Like everything looked really, really interesting. Different. Yeah, I'm gonna have to rewatch them back yeah. to back. A lot of the points you're bringing up are making me think of all the reasons I hate the fourth movie because like the <laughs> childlike reversion there bothers me yeah. so much to this day. Now, now like <laughs> looking back at them, I feel like the fourth one might actually be the worst one. <laughs> yes, <laughs> three, three and four are definitely my least favorite of the yeah. movie. Four storytelling wise, I have. Have a lot of issues with the way they told the story in the movie. See, one of my biggest, actually my biggest pet peeve though, is in the third movie because they open with him doing magic, and then 15 minutes later, they're like, "Sorry, you're expelled for doing magic." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that does really, really bother me. <laughs> He's like doing Lumos outside yeah. of Hogwarts, which he's not allowed to do, yeah. And then he gets in trouble for it in that movie. <laughs> this was yeah. also the movie where they stopped, like, poofing Hermione's hair as much. Oh, R.I.P. <laughs> yeah. Second movie was perfect Hermione hair. Perfect Yes, very <laughs> true. There's a few moments I was wondering about, because I remember everyone making a big deal about that guy in the start of Prisoner of Azkaban in the movie, and he's stirring his spoon without touching oh, it. Oh, reading a brief history. But, <laughs> yeah, but the funny thing is, because everyone's like, oh, he's doing wandless magic, he's so powerful, blah, blah, blah. But then I'm, I'm watching it again for like the billionth time, and the waiter in the Leaky Cauldron does the same thing. He like flips his hand and the chairs all hop up on the table. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, they're all, <laughs> they're all doing that in this scene. The janitor's a prodigy too. Like... <laughs> So I don't know. I think they were like inconsistent initially with some of the mm. for sure. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it, I think it was what you were saying, Emma. It was just like it was time to make a change. They couldn't keep wearing like the robes, and it would have not looked as cinematically cool if they were just constantly flicking their wands. And so Alfonso <laughs> was like, "All right, it's time. We're making the change. Let's mm -hmm. go." Yeah. yeah, I just felt like mm -hmm. Alfonso Caron like it kind of felt like he went in being like, I'm going to make this my movie instead of trying to like make it like fit in a little bit better with the franchise. Like, like I, I still really don't like the like talking heads that he added in and stuff. Like, uh -oh. like he added in like all his own little things where I'm like, this isn't, this is part yeah. of the water. Like, why is this here? But, uh, the funny thing is I was thinking that exact thing last night when it, the shrunken heads, that's what you're talking about. Mm -hmm, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Cause I'm like, it's funny, but it doesn't, I was like, where was that in the book? And then yeah. I was like, no, that wasn't in the book. <laughs> and it doesn't feel like it should be in the wizarding world. Mm -hmm. I do agree with that. I was like, this is very, it just seems really out of place. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I agree with that for sure. It was a weird thing to add. Also, I was like kind of thinking about sort of feeling ranty about this last night when I was watching it too. Tom, the innkeeper is like completely normal in the book. And they made him into this weird joke in the movie, hey? Yeah. Like, it, yeah. it's definitely, he's played off for laughs and given a hunch and, like, all this. Yeah. And I'm like, why? There's a lot of, like, body shaming in the Harry Potter series. And the more I watch it, the more I realize that that is something all through it for humor. Mm -hmm. Dudley, Even particularly. In books, but, yeah. Especially in the books, Yeah. Too. Oh, in the books. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Because yeah, like, I read like the first like four chapters before this chat, and like Marge's weight is definitely used as like a mm -hmm. ha ha thing, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, Dudley is like constantly mentioned, like his chin's wobbled, and like he shoved things into his face, and his porky eyes or whatever, his, like, like constantly. His like yeah. home, home from school for the summer gift is like a kitchen in the TV or a TV in the kitchen because he's like <laughs> yeah. complaining about having to walk from the kitchen to the living room. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 
very much. Yeah. And it's one thing because there are there are people like that. But it's one thing if it's like a character who that's who he is or a character that's like that's applied to them because you can tell, oh, ha ha, look at how fat he is. And also that means he's mean. Yeah. Right. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's played off yeah. on a number of levels that I think are pr are pretty bad. Yeah, There's definitely things, especially in the first few books, I feel like that very much looking back at them, like they're such a like product of their time and it doesn't. Hold yeah, up, very. You know, yeah. it doesn't hold up in like modern. Yeah, very movement, much. You know? Yeah. It very much feels like old children's literature. Like You can tell that she yeah. was definitely inspired by a lot of like rolled doll and like older stuff you know mm -hmm. where like that was oh for sure for, like evil adults to be like these like fat caricatures mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah like uh that reminds me of aunt sponge and aunt spike from yeah. james and the giant peach that that kind of thing yeah, yeah. very much um. <laughs> yeah the um Someone said in the comments the Jamaican Jamaican talking heads yeah, are pretty awful. Yeah, yeah, that was something else I was thinking. Like, ooh, it's like yeah. <laughs> it's not really okay. Yeah, yeah, it's true. There's a lot that that I rereading the books kind of well, um, a lot to think about that I definitely missed uh, the first you know couple times I was reading the series. Yeah, it didn't occur to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I do feel like as far as the books go, this one did a really good job of starting to ease you into the darkness that was coming mm -hmm. with like the introduction of Sirius Black, who's like a mass murderer, which we haven't really mm -hmm. had any mass murderers mm -hmm. who aren't like this snake eyed villain, you know? Mm -hmm. um, right. Yeah, I was actually thinking about that when I was restarting it because I think a lot of times we talk about like Goblet of Fire being like the turning point in the series where like it gets darker. But like really like this book is a turning point in a lot of ways because it's the first time that like Harry and his friends don't win. Like they lose at the end. Like Sirius mm -hmm. Black has to go into hiding, he can't be free, and like Wormtail runs gets away, like they don't get any mm -hmm. of the things they wanted in the end. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's the first time you realize that like not everyone is what they seem. Like Sirius Black mm -hmm. seems like a bad guy, but he's not. So what does that mean for all of the other adults in their lives, basically? Mm -hmm. Well, and also it's the, you know, with Trelawney giving the prophecy, it's like, oh, the Not servant will return, <laughs> return to his master. Yeah, like this is the start of everything. And it's mm -hmm. kind of like, Setting, setting us up for more darkness, pretty I think much. It's really interesting, because I knew a lot of people back in the day when these were coming out who like quit read. I knew people who quit reading after the fourth one, because they're like, oh, it's too dark now. Like it just suddenly got so dark in this book. And looking back on it, it's like, no, the third book was setting you up for just it. Setting like, it up, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Like Trelawney's prophecy yeah. scene is so freaking scary when you look back at it and like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, and the whole book is scary thinking. <laughs> mm hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and and the fact that they talked about like how Black uh, blew up this kid, mm -hmm. he blew and him up. Muggles. They only they, like, they only found a finger. Oh yeah, yeah, and killed a bunch of Muggles. He's a mass murderer. They mm -hmm. tell you what happened. It's dark for sure. Yeah, just because it's not necessarily yet on the page, like the climax of it isn't super super gory or dark. It's still like telling you. Yeah, hi. This exists in the wizarding world. It's not all happy, magical stuff all the time. And we're going to get into that darkness. Yeah. Yeah. And like, there were a few different reasons that this was my favorite book growing up. Um, and part of it was that, like, it was that whole idea of like them not winning at the end and things didn't turn out perfectly. They didn't like beat the bad guy and win. And the fact that there like wasn't really, mm -hmm. like, I loved that Voldemort wasn't in the thing. He was like kind of this mm -hmm. like specter in the background, but he wasn't involved this time yeah. mm -hmm. I love yeah that. so um they brought in Lupin in this one and you start to see even more of like the bigotry in the wizarding world mm -hmm. and the fact that like Lupin has not done anything bad like Sirius Black allegedly had but he's still treated similarly in a lot of ways like people don't think he should be in the school um they make mm -hmm. this like horrifying shack for him when he's a child. <laughs> yeah. 
yeah, when you think about that, like, here's this dilapidated, nasty old house. We are wizards, <laughs> and we're going to make you a nasty house to go through this traumatic event in once a month. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty mm. bad now that you you uh, <laughs> word it that way. Mm. That's terrible. There's a room of requirement. They could have put him in there. Mm -hmm. That's true. Weird. <gasps> okay. The the tone of this book. Did you guys think, because I didn't realize until I was about halfway through it from calculating the year and stuff that he is 15 in this book. He's 13. He's 13. Oh, weird. For some reason, I thought 15. He's but 11 even, in the first book. Okay. Probably. But even, even at 13, to me, it seemed younger. Like the way, I don't know, for some reason... Yeah, much younger than 13 even is how it came off to me for some reason. I, I feel like we like really kind of start to see his like teenage attitude that like really comes out in the fifth book in this one. Yeah, like, in the beginning, just in those first few chapters I read, like all of his attitude about Aunt Marge's like visit, you know, and that he can't just keep it's, quiet. Like he has to say something when she's insulting his parents. It's like, dude, just, she doesn't, she's, it's not, you're not going to change her mind. Like, you know, like. That is a very teenage thing to do. Yeah, for real. Yeah. <laughs> and then he like runs away. <laughs> like, he's like, mm -hmm. obviously I'm gonna get expelled. Might as well run away. <laughs> See, that is another of my absolute favorite parts, which is why I love this movie so much. Is the night bus showing up and Stan Shun Pike like hands down one of my favorite scenes. They did a really them going to the traffic. Yeah, it's so good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and they definitely feel like I can't remember which Percy Jackson it was that they definitely tried to sort of rip that scene off with that crazy tax. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, so in the first one, I think. Yeah, it's driving. Like it's like the much three boats drive it, I think. Yeah. yeah. They have like one eyeball between the three of them. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I enjoyed that scene too, but I was yeah. like, this is very Harry Potter and the night bus yeah. <laughs> feeling, mm -hmm. how crazy it is, you know? Yeah. It's really good though. I yeah, do feel like the third book kind of straddles that, okay, the first two were so whimsical and happy and we have to prepare the reader and oh, Harry for yeah. that. Like he is getting older now. He's not going to win every time. He's going to start having crushes on people. Um, yeah. People aren't going to be what he thought for they were. sure. Mm. And so it kind of has to make that voice transition as well. True. Yeah. It straddles that, that gap between. Um, and it also like expands the world too in, a, in like really good ways like you know at each book it expands the world a little bit more but like in this one yeah you get the night bus and you get Hogsmeade and you get like all these you learn more about Azkaban and about like adults like you meet more adults from this mm -hmm. world you get the Marauders mm -hmm. map too yeah. and Hogwarts is a lot bigger than you thought it was yeah. a lot okay. of the whole thing with the Marauders map I always think about this every time about the whole reason that Lupin saw, um, figured out Wormtail was because of the map, right? <laughs> and I'm like, so did Ron, like, did the brothers who had the twins yeah. had the map all the time, they didn't see Wormtail sleeping in the brother's bed? Like, <laughs> hey, who's this Wormtail guy in, Ron, in Ron's bed with him every single night? I like, mean, you just said Peter Pettigrew, so I mean, yeah. they just weren't gonna get into Ron's business. Like, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Oh, it's a pretty small school. You think they'd be like, there's no one named Peter in Ron's year. <laughs> What's happening? But, but, like, the map is so allied, detailed. I'm not going to say anything. But, <laughs> but the map is so detailed that Harry can see himself reach out, pull out his wand, and tap the hump. So I'm like, can they not see that, like, he's actually, Peter's actually in Ron's bed, like, <laughs> <he's> shaped <laughs> or something? I think the like detail of what you're doing is like only if it's you kind of that's what I was because like oh, Harry can really see other people doing things, he just sees their names like in it. Yeah. Like, their names. So yeah. yeah. That is I think that's a plot hole though. <laughs> if they had the map for that long, they should have been like, Oh, Peter Pettigrew, <laughs> what the heck is that? He's constantly with Ron all the time. <laughs> this is actually yeah. my um, so I have the illustrated edition of the third book, and mm. it's probably my favorite of the three illustrated editions. It's got a lot of really detailed, like, full-page things, and one of my favorite pieces in it is it's got Hogwarts all broken oh, down. Cool. So you've got all the floors and the towers and people's names and, like, a bunch of notes, and, like, it, again, just, like, struck home, wow, Hogwarts is, like, really big, and a lot is going on. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. They talk about getting lost in there all the time. And I'm like, yeah, I would need my phone and a GPS. Or I'd be like, sorry, I can't go. I will be lost forever. <laughs> You'll find my skeleton in the South Tower and be like, oh, that was Aaron. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah. I feel like in general she does a really good job. Like it really shows like how much planning she had. I don't know, she's like really good at writing a big series. You know, like not every yeah. most people could not have done this. Where like she's really good at like building up the world and building like the darkness and like building the character, you know, like just the forethought to be like these things need to happen in this book so that the fourth book can happen and so that the fifth book can happen you know like yeah. all those little things <laughs> yeah. that come up later you know there were at least a couple times where i went oh this comes up in the sixth book or whatever when i was reading I'm trying to remember what specifically it was well just like trelawney being like wondering why trelawney is even there, there you know like, <laughs> yeah you don't find out until like was it like the fifth book yeah mm -hmm. yeah well you he, find like, out to it, but he does yeah. yeah he he hints that trelawney hasn't given a prophecy since whenever yeah. whenever so yeah, you know like oh, the first prophecy in a long time yeah yeah and then like that prophecy is like a major plot point <laughs> in the fifth book mm -hmm. I also just love, I remember one of the things I really loved about this book was the fact that like they finally won the Quidditch Cup. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> like they finally were able to play a yeah. full season of Quidditch. Like, <laughs> 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 I was like, finally. Mm -hmm. I remember that being very important to me as like a 13 year old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Poor Harry. Has no, and Oliver Wood is just yeah. like sobbing <laughs> at the end. Here and he finally gets <laughs> I love how intense he is through this yes. whole, whole yes. book. <laughs> oh. And like 13, 14 year old Megan had the biggest crush on the guy who played Oliver Wood. Oh yeah, for <laughs> sure. Like even before the first movie came out, we all knew that Oliver was hot. Like, yeah. <laughs> we just knew it. Yeah. I was like <laughs> devastated that he was barely in the third movie. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't get his fourth movie cameo that he was supposed to have. Yeah. He had to cut out so much of the Quidditch World Cup. Gosh. Another spin of the movie. Of the fourth movie. <laughs> what were they thinking? <laughs> that's, I was there for a whole Quidditch World Cup movie. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's why I came. <laughs> they seriously could do a whole Quidditch World Cup. Mm -hmm. like and make it seem like you're in the audience and give you 3d glasses and i would be there <laughs> for, yeah. for like an hour it's the only sports i would voluntarily watch <laughs> sign me up for that i love how like jk rowling has talked about how like creating a sport and like having a sport involved in the story was like one of her worst mistakes because then she had to like describe all of this <laughs> and i was like now it makes sense why she kept I having it happen so that quidditch would be canceled like, yeah. the whole fourth movie or the whole fourth book she just like got rid of quidditch altogether I yeah. can't imagine. I even have, I even have trouble with like fight scenes yeah. sometimes. So mm -hmm. yeah, I can imagine be like, and then they did this, and then they shot a goal. It was mm -hmm. good. And, like the first three books, there's a lot of Quidditch games, and so she has to like make things different every time, you know, and have like a different interesting thing happen. And mm -hmm. whew, I couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah, yeah. Even with a real sport, I hadn't made up. It would be difficult to do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And when you have to like remember your own rules. Oh my gosh. It would never work. I'd have to have like a bunch of post-it notes on my wall just reminding me. Yeah. Oh, oh my like, gosh. We, we have were... to pass out like a minute into the game every time. Yeah. <laughs> Another fainting spell. Oops. Weird. Blood <laughs> pressure check down. Oh man, I was driving today. Um uh and uh this giant buck crossed the road and i'm i yelled at my husband like it's prom <laughs> and he's like what are you talking about yes. like you know what i mean it's prom all of the like patronus stuff was so cool in this book i remember mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay is it whole because my husband was like okay if you could be if you could choose anything for your patronus 
why would you choose like a deer? But I'm like, I don't think you choose it, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's just whatever animal represents you or something yeah. pretty much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Exactly. And what about the uh, uh, the anime guy or anime just or however you say it? Like, you can you, you can't choose either? That's so. what I was wondering. Yeah. Like, does McGonagall turn into a cat on purpose, or does that's just her form? Like, why know? would Peter Pettigrew have chosen a rat? Like, right? I know. <laughs> that's what I would say. Peter kind of choose a dog so that he could be there to help Yeah, control. I think the rat was, like, to hit the notch. Um, yeah. Oh, maybe. So I do think you why a rat? rat? Be a chipmunk or something. Yeah. Yeah. Always, like, <laughs> yeah, I think it might be a bit of a person reflection of personality, too. Yeah, can you imagine you turn into a rat for the first time and you're like, oh crap. <laughs> a crappy person. With a rat. <laughs> like seriously, how do you nickname your friend Wormtail and trust them? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> a little giveaway there. Did you not read Lord of the Rings? <laughs> <laughs> you might as well have turned into a weasel. Yeah. It's dead giveaway. <laughs> I'm Googling how this works now. I gotta know. Inquiring minds want Probably to know. Probably a Pottermore somewhere. I'm sure it's- I'm on the Harry, Harry Potter wiki. If we know like how wizards used to use the bathroom at Hogwarts, we have to know how anime goes. Well, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't bring that up. <laughs> I don't want to think about it. Um, you have to hold the leaf of a mandrake in your mouth for an entire month. Using it. the leaf for the creation of a potion. Challenge accepted. Recite an incantation. Drink the potion during a lightning storm. Okay. Um, Storms here all the time. Sure. Ready to go. Um, dangerous. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Tell me if you can do it however you want. <laughs> I'm trying to find it. It's giving me so many details, though. <laughs> Wow, this you really know how to form, do the spell now. <laughs> yeah. This animal form is not chosen by the wizard, but determined by their personality and inner traits. Um, it may also be that the full-bodied Patronus may reveal what a witch or wizard would turn into if they were an animagus. For example, Minerva yeah. is a cat. I would be a squirrel. That's so disappointing. So, so yeah, so <laughs> if your friend becomes an animagus and turns into a rat, why would you keep <laughs> pressing them? <laughs> You don't hang out with that guy. They're reflective of their personality. <laughs> They're like, huh, seems legit. Okay. <laughs> Better than I did in my life. <laughs> wow. Oh, gosh. Yeah, that's what I was wondering. I always knew don't James Potter would go live as an idiot, but this really confirmed it. <laughs> 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 Seems like it's a giveaway. Like, I feel like Nori would have been like, this isn't a good idea. It's well, like the Gryffindorness, which I can say as a Gryffindor, of like, <laughs> oh, no one will wrong me because yeah. we trust each other and we've done so much for each also, other. Yeah, he was a fellow Gryffindor, so you're like, yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Some Gryffindor. <laughs> Jeez. Shame. Shame. He's not shame. good enough for any of the houses, honestly. Yeah. Because, like, he definitely no. doesn't belong in Slytherin. Like, no. too much of a wimp. He doesn't yeah. think far enough ahead for that. Mm -hmm. Or Ravenclaw. No. And he's too selfish to be a Hufflepuff, so. Yep. Shouldn't have been allowed in any Should have been a squib. <laughs> 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 the introduction of the um, Marauders, though led to like one of my favorite slash the first time I had really ever pieced together something like this where um, they're kind of metaphors for the current characters on the page um, and how they like match up but with like subtle differences because of different choices made by the current characters. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah because the whole like Neville is like the Peter Pettigrew like analog he but he makes decision. different choices. Yeah. yeah. I love that whole. And like Harry and his friends treat Neville differently than, mm -hmm. than his friends treated mm -hmm. Peter. Yeah. Also, Neville never would have turned into a rat if he was an animagus. Yeah. <laughs> What's Neville's Patronus? Do we know? I'm sure the. I'm sure if you look at Pottermore. Yeah. 
I can't remember if we or just see Google, because like I found the exact same thing Megan did, like without having to read the whole thing at the exact same she, time she did by just Googling. How do you pick your animagus? Um, it doesn't have a form. It's a non-corporeal Patronus. Oh. What? So what Why? Do do? What does that mean? Like not everybody takes it. Like if it's not strong enough, not everybody takes a form. It's just like the oh, mist no. stuff. Yeah. So not oh, everybody. Not no. everybody can produce. That means we can choose what his animagus would be. It just, it's just a cloud. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like a or something. It's just a light mist. <laughs> it's like, what did I forget? <laughs> <laughs> Poor Neville. I love him. He's great. Yes. Agreed. No, I bet he would be like the hawk on his grandma's hat or something. <laughs> It's a vulture. <laughs> the unexpected, we fears. <laughs> that is one of my favorite parts too. Is the Bogart snake yeah. wearing the stuffed mm -hmm. vulture hat? There's just so much good, like mythology and like world building in this book. Yeah. Like so good. Like I feel like you love the world mm -hmm. when you read the first two, but I feel like this one like really makes you like. I don't know. Like you almost feel like, you feel like you're a part of it in this one in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I love one of my all time favorite parts is his description of when he's staying at the Leaky Cauldron and he's like spending his days in Diagon Alley, like mm -hmm. getting Sundays while he's doing his homework and learning about the mm -hmm. witch trials from the what's his name, Florentine or whatever his Florian. name is. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I can't pronounce his name. Yeah, I don't know. That's just like warm fuzzies mm -hmm. like i want to be there <laughs> yeah like harry getting to like spend time in the wizarding world outside of hogwarts for a little yeah. while mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. definitely like you can feel like how like perfect it is for him you know like how he's never like really felt this great outside of hogwarts yeah and, like mm -hmm. he's like a 13 year old living on his own in an inn and it's like the best his life has ever been at that <laughs> school <laughs> Yeah. It's really sad. True. And I feel like the problem of uh, wanting to go on a school trip but not being able to get your parents to sign the form is like so relatable. But yeah. it's like the wizarding world. So it added even more to that. Like, I'm a kid and sometimes my parents don't sign off on my permission forms. <laughs> and like none of the adults will like like, I feel like you get a lot of, like, the fallibility of the adults in this, too, and, like, how imperfect they are, because, like, they won't work with him and sign it, and then it, like, turns out they're all, like, keeping secrets from him about Sirius Black, because they don't want him to make rash choices, which, like, is legitimate, because it's Harry. He who makes rash did choices. make rash choices when mm -hmm. he found them. <laughs> um, but, yeah, like, you get a lot of that, like, sometimes adults lie to kids because they, like, don't trust them enough, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And they won't just be honest with him and tell him like why he can't go to Hogsmeade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I feel like if I was 13, that's old enough for you to tell me that I'm being hunted by a mass murderer. I'd like a heads up, please. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. At the same time though, like I could see myself if my kid was 13 <laughs> being like, nope, Nothing bad is ever gonna happen to you, and I will just yeah. slay all the monsters. Don't worry. Here's some candy. True. <laughs> I also just remember like having so many emotions reading this book because it like I think it has one of like the best like plot twists in it. Like when you like because like first you like go through all the emotions of like finding out the serious black like betrayed Harry's parents and you're so mm -hmm. angry at serious black and then like you have this huge plot twist of like it wasn't him and it's pulled off so well mm -hmm. so good mm -hmm. Gosh. I love it yeah I remember being so angry at serious black and then being like sorry serious black and then being like wait what <laughs> <laughs> emotional whiplash mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, we had a question from Flautus58. Uh, what did you all think about the Ron Hermione conflict? With I don't Scabbers know what it was. Oh, Scabbers. Oh, right, right. Classic. I think there's a picture of that in here. So. Oh, yeah. Here's one of them. There's a few different ones, but I love it. Ah. It's like, okay, so Scabbers, Scabbers turns out to be evil, but like also Hermione should have, like, 
Hermione was pretty terrible about it a lot of the time. She was like, stop complaining about Crookshanks. It's like, your <laughs> pet is literally trying to eat Ron's pet. Yes. She's like, it's fine. Yeah, it's true. Playing. I'm like, really, Hermione? <laughs> Do you, you're so well, she thought you knew nothing about cats. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what she's like, oh, that's what cats do. They chase after rats. I'm like, no, control your animal. <laughs> like, put him on a leash. <laughs> yeah. I do feel like it was a good, like, it's within the realm of Hermione's personality and especially mm -hmm. builds up to, like, their future conflicts, which are bigger, like her with the mm -hmm. SPEW and stuff. It's like, no, Hermione mm -hmm. can sometimes get really entrenched in these things and like They're refuses to people. admit that she's wrong, even yeah. though like other people are hurting from it. Yeah. <laughs> Which is and her sets up her whole like, I've got to take care of like misfortunate creatures, you know, because like Crookshanks has like been in this like animal shop yeah. forever and no one wants to adopt him and he's really ugly. <laughs> so she adopts him. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Um and I felt like it was an interesting way to keep all of the 13 year olds involved in the big plot going on. <laughs> Cause it wouldn't necessarily be realistic that all of them are like coming straight into contact with bad guys. But when you bring this in mm -hmm. and, and just like the interesting, like, is there something to Crookshanks? Like does Crookshanks mm -hmm. have a secret? Is Crookshanks just, and animal and animals are assumed. Yeah. Like, yeah. I'm surprised that like Hermione the bookworm didn't like do more research to find out what kind of animal Crookshanks actually was. Because Crookshanks like isn't a cat. We know from what? like yeah, from I like Fantastic Beast like the original Fantastic Beast book, the little one. It's like yeah. some sort of cat like animal. It's like a magical creature. Because mm -hmm. it definitely doesn't say it in this book. It just no, no, it never it says it in, in the, the book. Book. Yeah, it never says it in the books. Which I'm like, how did Hermione not like do research and find out? You're like, wow, oh, my cat seems different. Yeah. <laughs> what is Crookshanks exactly then? I don't remember. Yeah, because that wasn't revealed. But well, he's definitely smarter. Like Crookshanks would be like an animagus. Oh, Crookshanks is yeah. half half Measel. Measle. Oh, I don't half know what cat, that means. Half, yeah, it's like a magical creature. So smarter than the average cat, in other words, because he definitely acted like he was. Yeah, they're like small felines with large ears and lion like tails. Hmm. And they have a knack for spotting shady characters. There we go. Mm -hmm. I also thought it was cool how the sneak scope is going off all the time. Oh, and you're like, yeah, and you're like, oh, why is it still going off? Because it's going to go off around Ron all the time. <laughs> yeah. But it's yeah, also it's so, different. like, whimsical and in tune with the world that you're like, yeah, sneak scopes busted. <laughs> oh, well. Yeah. So yeah. Sort of, these, like, really obvious clues that, like, you just, like, blow off as, like, just a part of the whimsical yes. world. Because there's so yeah. many little details that, like, you don't pick up on the important ones. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, it's like you like find out in book one, this goes back to like planning in book one, like Ron says that like Scabbers has been in his family for like however many mm -hmm. years and it's the exact number of years, like 10 years or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Somebody even says yeah. early on, like he's living an unusually long mm -hmm. life. In this one, yeah. Or, yeah. When, mm -hmm. when he goes to the like pet shop in Diagon Alley, she's like, wow, like a non-magical rat wouldn't live this long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, exactly. Yeah, going through this book again, I was just really struck by how good J.K. Rowling is at dialogue. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah. there's the part where the lights go out on the train because the Dementors are boarding. And there's like this chaos of they're all in this booth and everyone is moving around. And they're like, who's that? Who's that? Ginny, Hermione? No, don't sit here. I'm here. And you can like tell who everyone is, even though she's not saying it all. And you're getting yeah. like such a clear picture of what's going on in this pitch dark. And, yeah. And it's funny too. She's like conveying all this stuff while being funny. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. That's one of the things I was thinking too when I was reading it. I'm like, I forgot how many funny little parts there are in this. Like um, the 
one of my favorites is when Percy is like always so pompous, right? And he's like, oh, Harry, smashing to see you. And then of course the <laughs> Weasleys are like, oh, Harry, old chap, wonderful. Oh, mom, of course to see you. <laughs> yeah. I think George's lines are always good. Like yeah. they never have a bad one. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely one of, yeah. I end up laughing quite quite hard through <laughs> quite a lot of this book, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Got a knack and that. it adds humor. Like I feel like Alfonso Cuaron, he was trying to add humor by throwing in those like slapstick caricature moments, and they felt out of place. The jokes that J.K. Rowling puts into the book never really feel out of place. It's just mm -hmm. they're funny people. In general, I feel like the movies never captured the humor that the books had. Yeah. True. Yeah. It well. Yeah. Because that was that tended to be the because they had to take out so much dialogue and stuff, and that's where so much of the humor is is in dialogue yeah. or like little bits of like dramatic irony, like mm -hmm. and you lose that in the movie most of the time. For sure. For sure. I also like I just like realized something we haven't talked about that I kind of almost forgot was in this book is time travel. <laughs> Yes, yeah. <laughs> Which, like, yeah. I think was part of the reason I loved it because I know some people hate time travel, but like, I loved time travel stuff. Like, I, I think I probably travel. saw the, I probably saw the movie Timeline around this time too. So, like, I was obsessed, <laughs> especially with this idea of time travel, where like you aren't actually changing anything. Like, what you're doing is like reflect. You, you know, like, to it. Mm -hmm. yeah, that this is the way it has always happened, kind of thing. Like, yeah, I. I've absolutely love this book but I hate time travel and if I were J.K. Rowling I would not have even put time turners in that because it ended up it ended up being utilized very badly in the cursed child like I yeah <laughs> I <have> many feelings <laughs> well and she like intentionally like destroyed all of the time turners in the fifth book yeah she didn't want people to be like well why don't they just use a time turner to fix this thing you know yeah. like she realized that she'd made this like do Zex Machina or however you pronounce it, you know, like, and she was uh, like, oops, <laughs> gotta get rid of that. Yeah. 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 But like, but I love this book because, yeah, I love that. I don't like, really like time travel stuff where they actually are like changing the future by changing the past, but I love this sort of thing where it's like, it's on a continuous loop and like what you've done is what you're always going to do kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think the movie does a really good job with that part. How like they see the ax come down, they see the birds, but they don't actually see Buffy get killed. You know, like they see all these little things mm -hmm. that make them think that certain things have happened, but they mm -hmm. haven't. Yeah. And like they see, like Hermione sees herself and like, you know, all those little things. Are, like, <laughs> is that what my hair looks like from the back? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely what you would be thinking. <laughs> One of the other reasons why this movie was not my favorite of the movies was that I feel like in movies one and two, occasionally things got tossed from Ron to Hermione to make her look more badass or whatever, which I don't think she needed. She was awesome on her own. But in this one, they hardcore take Ron's things and give them to Hermione. It's not Hermione who's protecting Harry when they're in the Shrieking Shack. Ron is on a bit up leg protecting Harry, saying you'll have to go through us and they took mm -hmm. that from him and had him laying on the bed like oh no what's gonna happen <laughs> and I did, uh, justice yeah. for Ron Weasley. oh yeah the movies so really good. like screwed Ron over it makes me very upset mm -hmm. like I feel like a lot of people's dislike of Ron is like the fault it's from the movies for yes. sure mm -hmm. I realized the other night like having having read this and then watched the movie immediately back to back, which I don't usually do, the movies and the books are almost just like smushed together in my brain. Like they are the, for some reason, the way I think of characters and stuff are very much a combination of the two. And like rereading it, I've been like, oh yeah, Ron does say all this stuff, yeah. you know? So it's definitely yeah, like- Ron is a hardcore Gryffindor and he has these amazing traits that yeah. are taken him in the films. He's a really yeah. good friend. And then in the movies, they take away all of his good friend attributes, but leave him with and his bad him friend change. attributes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They leave him with like his jealousy and his insecurity, but they don't give all him all his like, tantruming. Yeah. 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 They don't give him like, like his I would literally kill a man for you. <laughs> like, his jealousy and insecurity makes sense with his backstory, you know? Like he's mm -hmm. not a perfect character. Where they like kind of in the movies make Hermione a bit of a perfect character. Mm -hmm. not in the books yeah there's a 
one of the publishing podcasts I had to stop listening to because they insult Ron every single episode. And it's always <sighs> discussions that, in my opinion, reflect too heavily on movie Ron. And I get so mad every time. <laughs> I just get like infuriated and hit stop. And I had to just stop trying to listen to new episodes because I just can't. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Tell them they're wrong. Yeah, I feel yeah. like a lot of people who hate Ron too, like don't understand like what it's like to be that person that you feel like everyone else has so much more than you do, you know, mm -hmm. including your own siblings, you know, and feeling like you are the least of everyone around you, you know, mm -hmm. and that there's nothing that sets you apart. And like, how that eats away at him all the time. And like, he's he's a kid, you know? Like you can't even be like, oh, just be better. Like, he's like 13, you know? Yeah, like, he's gonna need decades of therapy before he gets better. Everybody in the wizarding world looks mm -hmm. down on his family, you know? And he's like, he feels like he's the least of his family, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have so many emotions about <laughs> I could do an entire chat on Ron Weasley. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. But also, this is the book where, speaking of Hermione, Hermione gets to punch Draco Malfoy in the face. Yeah. yeah. Great part. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh <my> gosh. <laughs> as much as I love Draco Malfoy, beautiful still. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The crux mm -hmm. of so many Dramione fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. This one also has all the Firebolt drama, which is another one of her mind yeah. like, refusing yeah. to back down moments, which mm -hmm. she's kind of right about. Like yeah. she was wrong about Crookshanks, but right about being careful about the Firebolt. She was mm -hmm. right that the Firebolt was from Sirius Black, but wrong about it being dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> is it Harry almost killed himself on the Quidditch field? He didn't need help from a potentially yeah. cursed broom. <laughs> 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 It's so funny because um, the way that it's described when he's riding Crookshanks in the book sounds so much less enjoyable than the way they make it in the movies. Um, in in the book, he's like, it was hard to hang on and he's scared of like grabbing the feathers because he doesn't want to pull any, any out because Hagrid's like, he won't thank you for that. And he's like <laughs> scared of falling off and he does a circle and then comes back down. In the movie, it's all like, woohoo, oh, yeah. you know, like, <laughs> yeah, dipping your fingers in the water mm -hmm. a couple of times there's very different scenes and then same I noticed in the end there's no big werewolf chasing you through the woods drama yeah like they put those in are the good movie. for movies <laughs> yeah um, they definitely switch I around. still hate the way they designed the werewolf yeah. <laughs> yes I do yeah. not like it same like, I think ugh. it looked bad yeah yeah for yeah. sure I also oh, really don't like the way the movie ends. <laughs> like, it's it's blurry face. Yeah, it's like him like Why? flying on the fireball for the first time and he like speeds oh, past yeah. the camera. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awful. I'm like, why did you end it this way? I forgot there about so that. many ways you could end it. <laughs> it's so like all the other ones like end with him getting on the train to go home. And that one ends with like his blurry face as he flies. <laughs> oh, it's so bad. It's very like early 2000s ending. Yeah. <laughs> Very I, I remember yeah. like seeing that movie for the first time and being like, what was that? <laughs> that was a choice. <laughs> yeah. Very strange. Strange ending. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, there was something else I was going to say, but I can't remember what it was. She's very like, I like this scene, but I noticed that JK Rowling is very like, um, Oh, <laughs> children's literature, how she writes out Ron's long garbled uh -huh. scream. Arg, no! It's like taking up an entire page. Like, it's how some he authors. It. <laughs> yeah. How some authors say, like, wham or blam or crash in the. Mm -hmm. Like, they actually write that. You know what I mean? She's very much an author that does that type of thing. I find that interesting. Yeah. Also, that was one of the best scenes too <laughs> is Ron enjoying all the attention after people asking him about serious black. <laughs> mm -hmm. I remember what I was going to say. Um, 
this also brought one of my favorite behind the scenes moments from the movies where uh, they're filming the scene in the great hall and everyone is there and they have the sleeping bags and they put one, it was Alan Rickman put one of those like fart machines in Daniel Radcliffe's uh, sleeping bag. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> it was just like pushing the button while they were trying to film. <laughs> <laughs> is there footage of this yes okay clearly i'm gonna i know what i'm looking up after this yeah <laughs> oh my gosh oh, that's amazing i also love how like none of the teachers at hogwarts were like no hermione you can't take every class yeah you <laughs> you have have self-control hermione yeah. You have to make decisions. You can't do everything. They were just like, yeah, here's a time turner, 13 year old. Like, <laughs> I like to imagine, imagine that McGonagall like bent some rules. <laughs> oh, for sure. They talk about that. Yeah, they yeah. really had to bend rules because they had to like get permission from the ministry for it. Yeah. Like, McGonagall's a smart lady and a tough lady. I feel like she should have been like, no, Hermione, you have to make a decision. You can't. That's why I like to imagine that McGonagall has such a soft spot for Hermione because she sees so much of herself in her <laughs> that she's like, you are my daughter and I want you to be able to do what they would not like <laughs> you. Or maybe it's like a parent when you're like, can I have a cigarette? And they're like, here, have a whole pack. And then they're like, you're going to get sick of it eventually. And they're like, eh, you'll get what's coming to you. And she yeah, does. Exactly. After this book, she has to cut back on classes because she realizes exactly. she can't do it. Like, she's like losing her, her mind, basically, yeah. with too much work. And she's like pale and stressed mm -hmm. out. Yeah. So she drops a bunch of classes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and who okay it ended up being harry right that said the line some of my hands down favorite classes are with professor trelawney when mm -hmm. they're trying to read tea leaves and it's ridiculous yes. and it's really funny um in the movie but ron says it in the movie and harry says it in the book about so you're gonna be you're gonna what suffer, is it but you're gonna be you're happy. gonna suffer <laughs> but you're gonna be happy you're about right. it <laughs> yeah but harry is the one that says it in the actual book I think. And they're like doing their papers yeah. together for Trelawney. And they're making, like, things up, making up terrible things that are going to happen to them. <laughs> that's one of the best scenes. Because you could totally see, like, that's totally something yeah. that you would do with a friend in like a bogus class that you don't care about. You're like, yeah. that's something you and I did when we were roommates in college. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't like, the actual uh, book, though. Saturn was is going to be in retrograde, so <laughs> you are going to spill ink all over yourself. Like, just like random stuff. <laughs> but that wasn't in the book, right? It was just in the it's movie. In the book. It's in the book, too. It's in the book? Yeah. Oh, yeah. weird. It's like a whole scene where they're doing their homework together. They're like looking at their star signs or whatever, and Ron is like, ah, yes, Saturn in retrograde. This means a tiny boy in glasses will be born. <laughs> <laughs> Which is actually like weirdly prophetic of the actual prophecy she gives. She's like, in June, one of these people's gonna be born. <laughs> we had Flautus58 in the discussion section said the truest OTP is Harry and his fireballs. <laughs> so yeah. He just sits there polishing it all the time. So He's yeah. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> he fights for that love. <laughs> true your dog is mangling back there yeah the carpet <laughs> behind you that's all i can look at yeah. right now <laughs> we just got back from like a six hour drive that turned into a seven hour drive because of an accident on a three-lane road and so he's very happy to be back <laughs> oh also hands down favorite part is when harry is tormenting Malfoy and his friends at yes. the Shrieking Shack. And it's great in the book and the movie. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite parts is, Ron, I, I just got one of those hats that has the little tassels. Oh, and yeah. immediately, as soon as I put it on my head, I was like, ha, <laughs> I'm Ron. <laughs> <laughs> Like, I feel like the part. best scenes in these books are the ones that don't really have much to do with the actual plot, but it's just like these little like, yes, this is like teenagers at a boarding school together. Yeah. <laughs> this is what would happen. Yeah. yeah, it's so good. And I feel like the third book had a lot of those moments, book and movie, had a lot more of like 
well, everyone's together in this place and they're just mm-hmm. being kids. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they had a lot of room to breathe. Because you knew the world and there were new things getting introduced, but it wasn't as big as the first two where it's like, you have to get used to this wizarding world, mm-hmm. the whole of it. Yeah, especially mm-hmm. the second, like the whole second book is like people keep getting petrified and like what's going on. And this one, like you had like the whole like, oh, well, Sirius Black is trying to kill Harry, but like it was a very like subtle plot for most of the book. Mm-hmm. There weren't like a ton mm-hmm. of major plot points. So yeah, you got a lot more of like school and life as a Hogwarts student. Yeah. Because their lives don't seem in danger until he breaks in and slashes up the fat lady portrait and mm-hmm. yeah. That's and even why then, I, he doesn't threaten anyone. Yeah, that's why the first couple movies, like probably up to four or five, are my favorite. Just because you get so much more of like the Hogwarts life, essentially, and it's not all like doom and gloom. <laughs> yeah, I think Order of the Phoenix is my favorite of the movies. Yeah, I think that's a really good movie. Good movie. Mm-hmm. They did like that's one of the ones where they did the best job of like. Not only like best movie just as a movie, but also they did a really great job of adapting that book. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I would agree with that for sure. Where like I feel like four and six both took out a lot of important things to focus mm-hmm. on unimportant things. Yeah. And five was like a really good balance. He was yeah. <laughs> no. The anger baby. What a tough it's my husband's problem. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've been going for about an hour. Do you have other things we want to talk about about Prisoner of Azkaban? It's interesting because I'm just paging through and it talks about the committee for the disposable disposable bleh, disposal of dangerous creatures. And of course that just reminds me of Newt saying how in in England, um, they have a, oh, oh no, he's maybe said in, in the US, they have a backwards way of looking at magical creatures. But obviously they still have some of that in the UK, mm-hmm. the wizarding world. Makes me wonder what Newt's up to, because I think he's still alive in these books. Hmm. Yeah. Meaning he would be, he would be, Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I wonder where he would be at this What's time. What's he up to? <laughs> <laughs> where him and Tina up to? Yeah, because I was looking at the back of it and it, the Quidditch through the ages and the Fantastic Beasts and where to find them. Books are kind of like an ad in the back here. And it says property of Harry Potter on it. Oh, yeah. I have the Quidditch yeah. through the ages one. I love the original edition of them because yeah, they were supposed to be like the library copy. Harry Potter's Harry's copy. school books. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like they have like Dumbledore's notes in them. You know, <laughs> or, like, yeah. notes in them. Oh, that's so, cute. So. Oh, I want to find them. I don't actually have those ones. I need to get fantastic sheets. Yeah. I only have the Quidditch one. Mm. It was like exactly what you wanted at that age. You know, it was like the, mm. the books that they had, you know, like you can Yeah. Them. I kind of, I, I'm a little mad at my parents, honestly, because I wish I had, like, experienced them younger, right? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, that was just, like, the perfect age to get the the pretend Harry Potter um, textbooks and stuff and be really excited about that. I got, maybe it's better, though. I got so obsessed with things when I was, like, 11, 12, 13, <laughs> oh, yeah. like, Oh, Scary I was obsessed with this. Yeah. Like, yeah. Megan and I made our own Harry Potter forum. Like, yeah. we were so. <laughs> That's so cute. From Time Turner. Yeah. Speaking of, speaking of Prisoner of Azkaban. Oh Aspen. my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it ties. And cool. Emma and I were, uh, once the books all panned out, we were like the exact same age as Harry mm-hmm. when the seventh book came out. Mm-hmm. And so it felt very much like Harry was growing up as we were growing up. He basically was. Yeah. You guys literally grew up with him. Because it was like the first book came out when we were like six or something, but like we didn't start reading them for a few years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, especially because it took so long for the fifth book, like once the fifth book came out, we were like right around the right age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. 
Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. You should read mm -hmm. it. Have it. <laughs> Unfortunately, the Time Turner is no longer an operating forum. Unfortunately, we did our own like HTML right. coding for it. I remember the background yeah, was a brown. I remember that. But yeah, brown was really in back then. It was. It was. This was after we got ourselves banned off of another Harry Potter forum. So. What? Why? You have to tell me why. We decided to be trolls. It was intentional. We were like, we're going to get. There was something that the forum had done that we didn't like, some policy or something that we, we didn't like. So to protest, yeah. we intentionally. We were like cool. those 13 year olds who yeah. were like, this whole place is garbage. Yeah. We'd, like, swears. Oh, we'd like intentionally wow. like troll people yeah. and break right. rules. So that, and then we got banned. And then we were like, finally, we can start our own forum. Beautiful time. Yeah. I so mean, you remember what the rule was. We were really opposed. We were really opposed. So you were you were the trolls in the dungeon. We were the trolls in the dungeon. It, the policy was that you got like three strikes and then you'd be banned or something. So like we did exactly like the number of things that we knew would get us banned. <laughs> instead wow. of just leaving. And so, yeah, instead of just, yeah. Teenagers are weird. We didn't explain man. to anyone that we were doing this in protest. We just, <laughs> there was no point. Anyway. You rebels. Yeah. Teenagers are weird times. Yeah, we were. We were what can you do? <laughs> We didn't have a lot going on back then. <laughs> it's all we had. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, so I guess that's it for tonight. Uh, we'll be back next week. What's our topic for next week? Uh, we're doing the, like, intro to genre thing. So yes. just digging deeper into genres. Yes, we're talking awesome. about genres. So come with your questions about genre in general. And then we're going to get more specific in later chats. So we're super excited for that. Um, and we'll have videos all this week. And I guess that's it. See you guys <laughs> later. Bye. Bye. Bye.